Welcome to another Let's Play Sierra games. This time we're going with King's Quest 4. If you've looked at my other videos, and you probably haven't, considering the low view counts, feel free to pause this one and take a look at those. What I've done is I've done King's Quest 1, the AGI version, not the later updated version. I did King's Quest 2, and I did King's Quest 3. So logically, we move into King's Quest 4. Now for most of them, what I've done is I will actually comment as I'm playing the game. Uh, but those turned out to be pretty long. Like each one of those was hour, two hours, some maybe even longer. Uh, of the King's Quest series, King's Quest IV is probably the one that I remember the most. When I play these games, I try not to use any hit books or anything like that. I try to do it from either from memory or as if I'm playing it for the first time. But like I said, I've played all of these games <laughs> multiple times. Uh, King's Quest IV is the one I probably remember the most. I would say when I was playing this again for this playthrough, I would say I remembered about 95% of the riddles and clues and where everything went. So despite that, it still took me just shy of three hours to finish King's Quest IV. There was a portion where I messed up, uh, I broke a shovel, so I had to go back. But that only accounted probably about 15 minutes of time because it was just redoing the part with the ghosts. So anyway, let's talk about the intro. King Graham is like, yeah, you know what, I'm kind of old. Uh, I'm going to retire this hat. One of my kids can do it. So he chucks it through the air to see if uh, his son or his daughter will get it. And then suddenly he experiences a terrible squeezing pain in, in his chest and collapses to the ground. So they leave the hat there, unclaimed upon the floor, forgotten, and taken to bed. And uh, things don't look good for King Graham, as they'll say here in a moment, instead of just staring awkwardly at each other, like, uh, hey, who's going to say something first? So King Graham lies weakly in bed, Father Death hovering near. Grief suddenly overwhelming her, Rosella runs out from the room. Crying on the throne, oh, father, she sobs, you're still young, you, wow, okay, I forgot I sped this up here, so it's actually going kind of fast, and it's, she says she would do anything, and the mirror says, do you really mean it, and she says, who's speaking to me, and kind of glances around the throne room, oh, sure, now I catch up, I am, the voice says, look in the magic mirror, and Rosella, apparently still confused, is looking around, doesn't know what the magic mirror is. Hey, why would she? Because it was gathered in King's Quest 1, she wasn't really there. Anyway, Rosella sees an image in the mirror. Who are you, she inquires. I can't believe that it goes really fast when it has that big paragraph, but then these shorter paragraphs are moving much slower. I am the fairy Janesta in my land of Tamir. Tamir? Tamir? I don't know how to pronounce that. There is a remarkable tree. This tiny tree needs 100 years to bear fruit. But this is no ordinary fruit, for if a person were to eat it, they would find that they're in good health and well-being for many years. And where do I find this land? Rosella asks, which is a logical question, because she wants to save her dad. Uh, it says it's far away, but with my magic, I can bring you here. And everyone knows, there's a but. No one does anything for free. But I suppose there are some problems. See, Rosella is kind of smart. Ah, uh, you're correct. Uh, if you're willing to come to Tamir, I'll explain the situation, which is kind of odd. Like... Come to this land, and then I'll tell you. Anyway, however, once I bring you here, I can't send you back, which is even more awkward. You have to help me first. I don't know. What if I can't help you or find the tree? Oh, and you can see the mirror is looking kind of shaky, so the magic is getting a little weaker. And she says, you must decide now. My powers are growing weaker by the minute. And you see it twinkling away. You care for your father. No guilt trip there. Say yes now. 
and suddenly she is gone. Yes! So, off goes Rosella. And she's on the beach. You know, you would think if she teleported Rosella, why doesn't she just teleport to the beach where Rosella is? Or just teleport Rosella to her little base? Whatever. But as you can see, there is Janesta. She looks much younger here than she did in the mirror. She actually doesn't look that ill. Looks very pretty, very fit. And she, Rosella's like, I don't know how I can help you. And she's like, I'm losing my magical powers. I'm strolling through the woods, and Lalette, the evil fairy, caught me unawares and stole my magic talisman. And there it is. That is going to be our quest. And see, now she looks a little bit older when they zoom in like this on her. Maybe that's just me. She has a lot of makeup on, too. Anyway, she says she'll die in 24 hours because her body's diminishing if her talisman is not returned. She explains she's very evil and she wants to use a talisman to bring more evil to the world. Uh, and now Janesta is worried that it's going to contaminate the whole country and everything. Further, I cannot send you home without my talisman. Dun dun dun. So Rosella is like, hey, how can I help you? Well, obviously we need to get the talisman back, right? You can do more than you think, Rosella. I believe you will be able to penetrate Lolit. How would you pronounce that? Lolit's domain? Nah, whatever. Suddenly Rosella remembers the tiny tree. Can you tell me where to find this magic fruit? Hmm won't be that easy to reach the tree. It grows on a tiny island within a vast swamp on the other side of the Great Mountains. It sounds totally easy. I will help you any way I can. How do I find this evil fairy? And she says the castle overlooks Tamir from the Great Mountains. And she explains, there's not much more I can do as it is. It'll be difficult for me to fly home again. So once again, why don't you just teleport? <laughs> but that's neither here nor there, apparently. And she says, I'll disguise you as a peasant girl so you don't get questioned. So let's use a little bit of more of your dying magic to maybe turn me into a peasant girl. That seems like a logical use of magic for a dying fairy. Well, it'll be better for you. I must be off while I can still fly. Again, just teleport. It's not that hard. You teleported me from a distant land. You can teleport three screens over. All right, well, Janesta says goodbye. Good luck. Well, you're on your own, Rosella. And thus, our quest begins to find the talisman to give to the fairy so that we can get the fruit and return home. King's Quest IV was one of the games I really enjoyed because it's one of the first games, it, it is the first game I had ever played back when it first came out, where the main character was actually a female. Back in the 80s, everything was super macho dudes, you know what I mean? So there wasn't any really strong female leads. Well, there was for the Alien movie, but certainly not in games. So King's Quest IV was like totally different for me. And the fact that it switches from day to night. So many things about this game that was really amazing to me. So the first thing I remember when I was playing this is you have to find the bird and the worm, which... Remember, you can find it two screens over sometimes, or almost every time it'll be here. So, if you go to the cave area, whoops, you get the worm. And once again, I don't, I've played this game a lot, but I don't remember all the screens exactly. Over here, we have to wait for Cupid. 
So what I was doing, because I can remember if you had to be somewhat hidden, Cupid comes along, all naked, and you scare him, and you take his bow and arrow, because, you know, that's what Rosella should do, is just steal. This game really taught you a lot that uh, if it isn't nailed down, just steal it. It doesn't matter. And over here we found the golden ball. And this was one of the harder riddles when I first played this, is dropping the ball in the pond. I don't even remember how I figured this out. I don't remember if I called the hint line. Uh, my friend Sean and I used to play all these games together. Um, maybe one of us came up with the idea. Once we got the frog uh, back in the day, knew exactly what to do. So you kiss the frog, turns into a prince, and he's like, ugh, you're a peasant girl. Gives you his little frog throne, and then you take the ball again. Then you go to the house of the seven dwarves. Go in there and take a look. Everything's a mess. So what does a good peasant girl do? She cleans up the place. In the regular speed, this takes a little bit of while because she cleans the bedroom, the table, the dishes over there, the cabinet, washes everything, gets the broom, sets up the dishes back, and was like, woo! And then each of the dwarves slowly comes in. So thankfully this is sped up a little bit so that these dwarves are actually moving at a quick pace for the most part. It does look like they're doing something dirty when they walk up to the fireplace, but I think that's just the fire. Not actually any form of hand gesture. Alright, the seven dwarves all sit down. That one got two plates, and he says, hey, what's your name? I say Rosella, and he's like, hey, come have some soup with us. Thanks for cleaning up the place. So you sit down, and you chow down, watching these dwarves randomly scarf the food down. And one by one, they all leave and head back to the mines, because that's what dwarves do. And once again, leave a mess. So what you can do, and it's not required, you can actually clean again. I believe it gives you points. I wasn't really paying attention. I think it gives you like another two points for cleaning up again. And then there's this bag, or pouch, that's left on the table. If you look inside, there's diamonds. So what we want to do is, this is where it's odd, even though Rosella stole the bow and arrow, we're going to do some honesty and be like, hey, bros, you, oops, you left this uh, bag of diamonds back on the table in your own home, and I thought I'd come get it for you <laughs> and bring it to you. And that's the dwarf. It's like, nope, don't want to talk to you. And it's safe to fall from here, unlike almost anywhere else in this game, where it plummet to your death. So you go to the dwarf at the end of this cave, and you say, hello, remember me, I'm Rosella. It's like, hey, what are you doing here? Not a place for you. And being the strong female that you are, you disagree with him. And what you have to do is basically give, you have to stand in front of him first, and basically give the bag to him. And he's like, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. Keep it. And by the way, here's a lantern that you might randomly need. And tells you to skedaddle. So skedaddle we do after falling. Or I should say skedaddle we try to do. There's a lot of falling in this game because there's so, so many stairs. So we're off. We now have a bag of diamonds. Now... I know this goes to the fisherman, because the fisherman will require the bag of diamonds in order to give you the fishing pole later. Uh, one, one of the things I really like about the screen is that haunted house, uh, the broken mirror, it actually shows your reflection. So you look at the picture, right, and she's looking over to the wall, and with everything in King's Quest you want to pick up anything that's nailed down. So one of the things in this room you can pick up is a William Shakespeare book, which is weird because you're not on Earth, you're on Tamir, which uh, apparently they have a William Shakespeare as well, who ironically writes the same stories as William Shakespeare. So here you pick up the shovel and 
for now we're going to leave. We're not going to need to go upstairs. That shovel will be used later for digging up some graves. Yep, you heard me right. We're going to dig up some graves. There's this cool waterfall. When you wear the crown by the waterfall, it lets you swim under the waterfall. If you don't, the tide will push you back and you won't actually be able to swim underneath the waterfall. So right in this cave, we picked up a bone, or I'm sorry, we picked up the board. And if you step right inside, you can see right there, there's a bone. This game was insanely difficult with some of these uh, pixel arts. I mean, the, the art is beautiful in this game, but sometimes it's a little hard to tell exactly what is what. And especially if you don't know that you need it yet. I actually, like I said, I remember a lot of this game. So I remember what the bone is for, and I won't quote unquote spoil it, but we'll get to it. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and get captured. Dun, dun, dun. Well, my pets, what have you brought for me? Are you a foolish ghoul wanderer by mistake, or are you a spy for Janesta? So now we're going to have to prove to her that we are not a spy, and she's going to give us a couple of missions to do to prove that we are innocent of anything she might be thinking. So literally there's nothing to do in this room. You just look around until they come and pick you up. And she takes you back. My precious son Edgar has taken a liking to you. That'll come into play later. I wish to own the unicorn that wanders around. So now that is your first mission. You have to somehow capture the elusive unicorn that runs away from you every time you walk near it. So how do we catch a unicorn that keeps running away? Well, that's what I'm about to show you. So hang tight, good believer. We're going to cruise over to one of the three screens that we often see the unicorn. This is one of them. And sometimes if you just go back and forth, unicorn will reappear and sometimes he won't <laughs> there we go shoot unicorn when you say shoot unicorn obviously it's using cupid's bow that we stole not like a gun or anything like that so it's odd that you can just say shoot unicorn and now the unicorn won't run from you he'll literally stay on the screen forever now here's a minstrel now everything i did when i talked to him it says that he plucks away at an otherwise beautiful song, and he plays an oldie but goodie, but it really gives you no indication, not even when you're listening to the music as it's playing, that he's doing a bad job playing. So what you have to do is basically convince him that nah, you're not that good at this. Maybe you want to be an actor. So you give him the William Shakespeare book, which he does the to be or not to be. That is the question. Now, here is Pan, who is playing on his little flute. We want to convince them to take the loot instead. Now, this is one of the times where, for the life of me, I couldn't remember how to get this to pan. And if you take too long, he just dances off the screen. So you have to basically keep doing this until he comes back around. And it took me forever. Like, I kept running up to him and saying he's not paying attention to me. I literally chased him down just pressing F3 over and over and over again to see if I had to be like really close to him. And then now he's not appearing back, but he will here eventually. There he is. So I'm trying to give him a loot, and he's like, nope, not paying attention to you. Mm -mm, no way, go away. Mm -mm, I don't want to talk to you. I'm just playing my flute. So he's caught up too much as an own music, so that's when it dawned on me let's play the lute and see what happens and that's what it is he actually stops once you play the lute and then he takes it from you and he gives you the flute so that's why i saved the game as damn pan <laughs> now from here uh what i'm gonna do is hold on a second let me remember where i'm at go to the beach we are going to make our way to the fisherman, who we can see from that screen sitting on the pier. So if we go over here... Okay, man. How's it going? How's your fishing going? 
And like most fishermen, when you talk to them, they just ignore you and you're going to scare the fish. Oh, look. Yeah. Uh, he didn't come. Oh. So apparently I was blocking him that time, so let me get out of the way. I'll talk to him. He ignores me. Oh. All right. So as I said, there is a lot of falling on this game. As you can see from the previous screen, when we came back, he was no longer on the pier, so I knew at least he was in his house where I need him to be. And he complains that the fish ain't biting, and if they don't get any money soon, they don't know what they're going to do. He sighs heavily, so you give him the pouch of diamonds. And for the pouch of diamonds, he basically says, give her a fishing pole. That's right. You just paid millions of dollars for a fishing pole. You would think he would give up the house and move out as well. No, just a fishing pole. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go fishing using the worm that we caught before. Now we've got a fish. And now what we're going to do is swim. Uh, there is a whale that will randomly appear. Um, if Since he didn't appear there, what I'm going to do is there's something on the island that I need. And I actually need it before the whale appears. So that's why I was swimming towards the south end of the screen, because if I see him surface, or if I see the shark, I immediately go south to get off of that screen. And so there's the bird, and it needs to drop a feather somewhere, so I'll just keep it there. Oh, and there it is. So we get the feather. I'm not close enough. All right. So now it's safe to get caught by the whale that uh, you will see breaching in the water and then suddenly appear and siphon you into its mouth. Staying very close towards the southern screen in case that shark appears. I don't think it matters what screen you're on to make the whale appear. I think he appears on any screen. There he is. Say hello to my little friend. Couple to save game Star Trek for anyone who might get the reference. So you get the bottle, open the bottle, look in it, get a note. And if you notice, you can read the note several times and it's different every time. And they're all references to different Sierra games. There's Space Quest, Space Quest 2, Leash Suit Larry, The Black Cauldron, Mixed Up Mother Goose, it's all in there. So now, this part was painful originally, and now I remember it, that you basically have to go around the side of the tongue and to a point where you can actually stand, and, uh, and then you tickle the, uh, the tonsil with the feather. So, it's good to save early when you're doing this so you can find the sweet spot to get to. As you can see, it took me several times. And there we go. The whale says, ah, choo, because that's what whales do, apparently. And chucks you out. And you can see the little island up in the north. You go here. Kind of, sort of reminds me of uh, Johnny Castaway. So that's what I was looking for. If you're familiar with that screensaver, throw the fish to the bird. The bird drops something shiny. You look at the ground. It's a whistle. Now this part was tricky. Now can you tell me why on earth, if you look on the ground right in there, there's a golden bridle? It makes absolutely no sense why there's a golden bridle there. None. There's no clue to even look there. There's no reason to even glance there. I remember being stuck there forever. So anyway, you blow the whistle and a dolphin comes along and you say, hey, let's ride the dolphin. Cool little guy swims along, takes you all the way back. Try to thank the dolphin, but he doesn't care. He just swims away. So let's see. Thing I got. 
just need to remember where I left the unicorn. <laughs> where did he go? There he is. So what we're going to do is pet the unicorn and say, sorry for what's about to happen, bro, but I need this to happen. So you put the bridle that you just found on the deserted island onto the unicorn, and then you get in the middle and you ride the unicorn. So here we are riding this beautiful unicorn. And here come our goons to take you away, and one of them will lead the unicorn up the mountain path. And she says, oh, I think you're almost innocent. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. Now she wants a hen that lays golden eggs. She says, Bring me the hen and I'll give you a reward. So the goons drop us off again. So now what we have to do is get the hen. Now the hen, uh, if you're not familiar, is in the ogre's or giant's house. In the game, I think they call them ogres, but I think it's a reference to the old story with the hen that lays golden eggs and I think in the story it's giants not ogres but that's neither here nor there now I just need to whoops that tree map is very bit there's the ogre outside so we have to wait until the ogres are not there and I named the game ogres are like onions uh, hopefully everyone gets that reference so now we go into the ogre's house, and there's a dog, and you literally have seconds to throw that bone that we picked up at the cave to give it to the dog. And that bone will apparently last for eternity, so whatever it was that that was the bone of, it's solid. So what we did here is we picked up the axe with, that was in this room. We'll use that later for, well, I won't quote unquote spoil it. We'll see when. We'll see when we get there. So we go back downstairs and we open the door and we hide in here. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to keep looking through the keyhole and save the game as patience is the key. Get it? Because it's a keyhole. So essentially you keep looking at the keyhole until the giant appears or the ogre. If you five fo fum and I'm just hungry. That's what the ogre says. Nom 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 nom. And then he says, wife, bring me my hen. And there is what looks like a giant sized hen, but it's actually normal. And then it lays an egg and he falls asleep. Pretty sure the dude has, uh, not necrophilia, what's that thing where you fall asleep all the time? Narcolepsy, yeah. Necrophilia and narcolepsy are two different things. So the thing is, when you go out this door, the hen will automatically squawk. No idea why, but the ogre chases you and he's really quick. So what you have to do is, the only screen you won't chase you in is that forest, and you have to swing the axe at the trees who will suddenly say, hey, leave her alone. So now with the hen, which was relatively easier, I remember this being a lot more difficult when I first played it. Uh, back in the day, I think it's probably because I didn't know where to run away from that ogre, and it kept catching me. But now we're off to be captured again, and she's like, oh, I really ought to give her your reward now. She pauses, but I have one tiny bit of doubt left. I need you to do one more thing. I need Pandora's box. And if I could get it, I would be unstoppable. And you realize that, meh, this chick's pretty evil, and she's going to do evil things. But it's the only way to get the medallion, which is the only way to get the fruit, which is the only way to save her dad. So, uh, as I said in save game, she wants a lot. So we're on our third quest now, and that is to get Pandora's box. So, this part of the game, I'm just going to tell you right now, was insanely difficult for me. This is, there's three witches inside this thing. And what you have to do is you'll notice that they're passing an eye back and forth. Now, me trying to get that eye, I can't remember if I put all the captures in here, but the witches caught me about eight times when I'd get too close to the witches exchanging the eye back and forth. And as you can see, <laughs> I keep getting caught. 
there's literally a sweet spot you have to stand between the witches in order to get it. So what I've done is I've slowed down the game and they're still catching me, but I'm saving right in front of the witches and you can see they've caught me like another eight times. And I managed to finally snag the eye and they bow down. If you've ever seen Clash of the Titans, that's what I always remember, the original one anyway, with the witches in the eye. So now they all kneel down, walk out, and they throw you a scarab, which you're like, okay. So you get the scarab, and you're going to really need it because it's very, very important. You won't, you won't get past the next leg. And for whatever reason, even though Rosella stole Cupid's bow, and Cupid's known to be, I guess, a good guy, Rosella returns the eye to the witches by throwing it back to them when they ask for it. You would think you'd get more points for keeping it and uh, not giving it to witches who have tried to kill you and probably will continue to kill other people. All right, so now we're going to go in here. And this is another place that I had a lot of trouble. You light the lantern that the dwarf gave you and you go into this cave. And as you can see, there is a troll that is in this cave. And in the end, I think he catches me like about 12 times because he'll chase you throughout the cave unless you exit out towards the waterfall. So here we go into the it, and there he is. And he's, his appearance is completely random. You can literally save right before you go down a screen and then go right back down again after you've been caught and he won't be there the next time. It's utterly random, but I felt like it appears a lot. And this is another screen he won't appear in a lot. So what you do is the board that you picked up outside, you put it there because there's, it's really hard to see, but right when you walk there, there's a couple lines so you know something's different there and there's a chasm there. And if you don't put the board down, you fall. And here, this took forever. When I first played, I kept trying to walk to those little lumps of grass, but apparently what you had to do was jump. I don't even remember how we figured that out uh, when we first played this. I don't know if one of us finally just put a hey, jump over here and once again we're stuck here because we didn't know how to get across it wouldn't let you jump so you put the board down walk up and you get the fruit and this is a fruit that will save your dad's life but you still have to help Janesta because you can't get back to your dad without being teleported so you play the flute snakey for the snake and the snake gets hypnotized you grab the fruit and then hop all the way back and as soon as you hop over it turns to night and at night, there are certain things that only happen at night, which include the ghosts in the haunted house. And I think that's it. So the ghosts won't appear. At, whoops. I knew the chasm was there and I totally forgot. Uh, the ghosts won't appear until nighttime. Uh, so they'll give you, there's four or five of them that'll give you a series of quests that that they give you something that will be required, like everything else in King's Quest, that you get this, I don't want to say what it is yet, you'll get this item that you'll use later on in the game, but you have to complete every single mission for each ghost. So the next ghost won't appear until you finish the previous quest for the other ghost. So this is me being lost in this cave. And look. And look. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go all the way over. Save the game. Yeah, let's see, so there is apparently a, uh, a south exit from that first cave, because I always go straight until I can't, and then south. So apparently you can go south and then around, so it's like a square. So as you can see, it's kind of fast. I've sped it up twice as fast, because... In this section, I had made a mistake and I was digging graves just randomly to see if there's any like little Easter eggs and I end up breaking the shovel. So when the shovel breaks, you're not able to complete the quests for any of the other ghosts. And ironically, the game doesn't tell you that you're at a dead end that you have to restore or anything like that. You know, like when you die, it'll say, hey, you have to restore. 
Now, if you break the shovel because you're just randomly digging, the game lets you keep playing. And you can continue to do stuff, but you can never finish the game because you can't complete the missions for the ghosts. So literally, when I did this part and I was just messing around digging stuff, I got to the last ghost, which is the kid, and my shovel broke before I could dig his grave, and I couldn't finish it. So I literally had to restore all the way back to before I started digging. And thankfully, I was making several save games because I'm going to upload this to sierrahelp.com. It's a great site and great forums run by a collector. So that's why you're seeing everything in like an unusual super speed at this part because this is where I actually broke the shovel and couldn't finish the quest. And that's that was the one where I actually dug in the wrong place by accident. That extra dig was the wrong one, and that's where it says it broke the shovel. So now I'm I'm actually good with the uh, with the shovel. The shovel is back to being normal. So now I'm just actually looking for the right place to dig for each of these. And for the one that I'm on right now, it's the soldier who fought well. So I have to go through each of these uh, tombstones and find out which one is his. And it happens to be this one. You get his medal, wait for him to appear, give it to him. And then a, the child ghost appears, climb up the stairs, and he's sitting on that chest. He won't get off that chest, and you need to get him off that chest. So a good way to distract a boy is to give him a toy. Oh no, so this is where I broke the shovel. Yeah, so I was on the... <laughs> so I was like, ah, I broke the shovel, what do I do now? So this is where I'd broken the shovel. I thought I'd already restored to that point. So this is where I have a dead end, right? So the shovel's broken, I'm on the last ghost quest and you can't finish it. There's literally no way to finish the game at this point. So what I have to do is go all the way back to where it says and out. And here we go. Go back to the ghost and start that whole mission over. So now it's, it's at that sped up speed, but not blinding speed. Let me move the cursor. So we have to go back up to the baby. They do a good job with the collector and wh whomever else made the the ultimate King's Quest 4, which is what I'm playing here. It has the best graphics as well as the best sound hacked into the, this version of King's Quest 4. They really do a good job for what they had back then for music to kind of give it ambiance. Uh, that scene with the crib reminds me of the scene in Phantasmagoria with the crib, which was one of the freakiest scenes I've ever played in a game. Uh, me, my friend Chuck, his wife, my wife were all playing it, and we freaked out on that scene on Phantasmagoria with the baby. So it's it's always creepy when they do like uh, infant ghosts because that's you know it's an innocent like that it makes it super creepy. So now we've given the the little rattle to the baby ghost, and the baby ghost is quiet. Now we see, if you look at this guy, he's bound in chains, and he's a miser. And his is one of the first tombstones I'd read uh, originally, so I remember where his is at. So I read the tombstone. Sure enough, it's the miser one. And you'll see all these zombies, ghouls, that rise from the greys. Sorry, when they rise from the grave. If you have the black scarab, if they touch you, they just return from whence they came, as it says. And that's why the black scarab, it's one of the reasons the black scarab is very important, is it'll make the zombies or whatever return to the grave. And there's another spot where that scarab is very important, and you can't finish the game uh, without it. So next we hear crying and go up here and this woman is crying her heart's broken 
that's not a really big clue um but i remembered something about um being heartbroken and something about uh waiting or something like that and so the um sorrow and stuff like that was the clue that i needed for heartbroken and in there you'll find her locket so you go back and go up the stairs wait for her to appear and give her the locket and she disappears now there's this is where the lord and manor of the house appears and you look at him and it says he was a great fighter that's why he's missing a leg so what you have to do is find his grave and i couldn't remember where his was at originally but i think it's on the other side so we cruise over here i think it's that one that i was digging behind yeah so it's this grave you'd think it'd be that big like coffin crypt thing behind him if he's the lord and manor of the house not just a standard grave but what do i know and because it's going at high speed i originally typed the save game as metal as in m-e-a uh, m-e-t-a-l instead of metal so i ended up resaving the game there give it to him and he disappears And now the kid appears. And so you literally chase him all the way upstairs. And as you can see, if you don't get to his, you never get this ladder. If you never get the ladder, you don't get up here to see that he's sitting on the chest. So now, once again, you need to go find the kid's grave, which is, I remember where that's at. So we go down the stairs, haul down the stairs, Fall down the stairs <laughs> and go to that last grave. Re tombstone, and you can see it's about a boy. And sure enough, da da da, there's a toy. So we go back, open the door, go up the stairs. Little boy appears, climbs the ladder. And now he appears, give him the toy, kind of ponders it, thinks about it, but then he finally disappears. So now there's some sheet music. So what do we do with sheet music? We play it, all right? And I creatively name the, that part, Holy Sheet. See what I did there? I'm here all week, folks, or at least as long as you listen to the channel, if you haven't already stopped because of my amazing jokes. Now, King's Quest, or any Sierra game, always has these stairs. And if you look, the perception is at the bottom, they look massively long. But as you go up the stairs, you can see that it's essentially much thinner. You have very little room to maneuver back and forth. And then when you get to this part, the keys are actually backwards. So this was a nightmare for me to configure uh, to get up those stairs. So now we're at an organ, to sit in front of the bench, and then save game is music to my ears because I'm funny. And what we do is we play the sheet music. If you play anything else, it won't do anything, but if you play the sheet music, something little magical may open an opportunity if you will will open for you in the form of a drawer so if you look in a the drawer there's a skeleton key so you get the skeleton key and go downstairs save over the typo and in king's quest this is why you save every time you're going up or downstairs because you are going to fall especially when they reverse the keys and you've got to try to figure out how to get down the stairs safely I suppose if you do those flight sims, it's probably not a problem where you can reverse key very easily. So we wait, make our way down, make our way down. And once again, fall. 
but it was a safe fall, right? It's only a few steps. And you'll see there, in any Sierra game, there's always these stairs. And you would think that once you start walking up the stairs, or if you could just type walk upstairs, the character would be smart enough without needing your control as to how to walk up a flight of stairs. That seems like common knowledge of a girl who is between 16 and 18 years old, I'm guessing. I don't know how old Roselle is. But, I mean, she looks like a woman, so, like, how, how is it that they make you <laughs> control climbing upstairs? Alright, so now we're in a crypt, and this is where the scarab comes in for the second part. So you throw the rope down, and clearly there's all these, like, looks like Egyptian writing to me. I don't know why there's a mummy here, but there's a mummy, and he sees the scarab and <laughs> runs away. And now we have in front of us Pandora's box. Now I've, just for fun, uh, what I've always done is, you know, you don't open Pandora's box. And so this is really stupid. Like you release these demons, but they look like little fluffs of gas. And the thing is from that point, if you die that way, you actually cannot restore the game. You actually have to hit enter and then go back to the beginning. Unlike any death anywhere else in the game, you can restore from, not from that one. Don't know why, but there you have it. So now we're, oops, clearly I can't walk. <laughs> and so what we're going to do is we're going to go back up, get captured by the goons again, and let them take us away. And she's going to say, great, you brought me the box. She says, what a pretty name, you've earned your reward. And my son's fallen in love with you, and your reward is he gets you're gonna get married to him, right? Cool story, great. He'll get married first thing in the morning, but you'll sleep in his room tonight, but he'll sleep in another room, you know, because even apparently she is not okay with her son sleeping with an unmarried woman, so she throws you into the uh, room of her son. I feel like I should have edited this portion of the uh, video to play Girl in the Tower from King's Quest VI because, well, it's a girl in the tower. But anyway, there's nothing you can do here. I just fiddled around until Edgar appears and slides the rose under the door. And it seems like you should be able to pick it up, but you actually have to walk in front of the door and before she sees what it is. So you pick up the rose, and then you get the key from the rose. And I put for the save game, key to my heart, because I am so witty. Like, these save games are classic. All right, then we make our way. Yes, you guessed. Seriously, more stairs, and that's the quick way down. So since we're coming down the stairs, the keyboard is, or the key to come down is actually reversed. Up is down, down is up, side is left is right it's 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 a mad world so make your way down or get stuck like I do <laughs> let's see because now we're on the other side of the stairs shake 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 goonies hopefully everyone who is Taking the time to listen to this understands what the Goonies reference is, because the game came out in the 80s, so did Goonies. So hopefully you get what I was implying when I made that save game. Now the thing is, as you're walking by, you cannot get close to these goons. Because if you get too close, what will happen is you'll wake them up. So I think there was... I thought there was something I needed there. Oop, see, that's what I mean. So... If he wakes up, morning comes, and I'm going to show you this great ending of where you get married. I mean, Rosella actually doesn't look bad. The black dress and purple sleeves. She kisses Edgar and faints to... I don't know why. But she's stuck here forever. And since it's daylight, we know that Janesta has also died. Because we couldn't get the medallion back to her in time. So we restore from the cool Goonie save game.
go over here. This time, avoid him. Avoid that one. And for the love of Graham, there's more stairs. So I know if you go out this way before something happens, ta -da, you're basically captured and thrown back in the room. So don't do that. Now we have to go up the stairs. And as you can see by my save game, I've called it, why is climbing stairs so stupid? Because really, it's one of the worst parts of the game. And so apparently she's also very trusting because she just sleeps. And then I realized at this point, I forgot to get my inventory because that's what's in the other room that I need to get into. So you squeeze by him. It's either in this cabinet, nope, or da-da. So you open the cabinet, get your possessions. Now we have to basically redo <laughs> the stairs back to Lolette's room. So, you know, that's fun because the stairs are my favorite part of this game. So squeeze by him, dodge him. And we're back on the stairs. Going up the stairs is not actually too bad of a problem. It's that when it reverses where the problem is for me anyway. So now we need to open the door, unlock it. Do you want to use the gold key or skeleton key? So I say use skeleton key just to see what it says. I'm going to use golden key and it keeps saying, what would you like to do? So literally you say unlock door and it says which key? Just say gold key. And I called this game Bon Jovi time because what you're going to do is you're going to shoot her with the arrow. And she screams and says, what have you done to me? Oh, it hurts. It hurts. And you see her literally explode and change colors and fall down. And she says that she will get her revenge. And then, plop, dies. So a new day is dawning, so you're running out of time. Edgar shows up and is like, hey, killed my mom. Cool story. Um, I still love you. And basically bails. And I saved the game. Always did like that boy. So now we get the tailspin from her dead body. And we hurry along. And you'd think right now, now that the goons don't have, whoops, the goons don't have her as their master that, you know, they could just come pick you up and fly you. Because, I mean, they bow to you now. So if you open the door, what you want to do is go in here and get the hen. And you also want to get Pandora's box. Um, yeah, didn't think that chest opened. And they all bow to you again up in the dungeon. Nah, it's, you don't want to really visit your old cell, do you? And they bow to you again. Going down, anyone? Larry would say that's what she said. Yeah. Alright, so now what we're going to do, we have the hen and Pandora's box. And we also have the unicorn to deal with. What we have to do is we have to basically undo everything that we did when we served her. So we have to free the unicorn, we have to return the hen, and we have to put Pandora's box back and then lock the crypt so that we basically undo all the quote-unquote evil that we did. Uh, then I should just fast forward this part because I couldn't remember where. Logically it told me here, but I didn't think I was close enough, so you have to stand at the middle post and that frees the unicorn. So apparently the unicorn is no longer in love with you even though he shot up with the Cupid's bow, he's like, 
you left me here, I'm gone. So the unicorn bails, don't see it again. You'd think the unicorn could give you a ride down the uh, mountainside, but no, it just leaves. So now we have to make our way down this mountain path, which means if you if you watch King's Quest 3, you know what it's like to go down this crazy path. This path is also similar to what was in the Black Cauldron. It's not as bad as King's Quest 3 or Black Cauldron because both of them had a long winding one. This one's pretty short, all things considered, but that first step, that's a doozy because it's really thin and you've got to work your way around it. Once again, you would think she could just walk down, walk down a cliff without falling. Like, hey, I think I'm too close. Maybe I shouldn't do this. But what do we know? So I'm trying to remember where everything is at. You can go here first. Climb down the rope. Mommy comes out. It's like, oh, you still have the scarab. Cool story. So you put down Pandora's box, leave it alone, and climb the ladder. And what you're going to want to do is basically lock the door so that even though you have the scarab, you'd think that would deter anyone with the mummy down there. But what you want to do is lock it, and what she does is kick the key under the door after you've locked it. So now without the skeleton key, no one technically has a way to open it, and if they do, well, let's save the black scarab, the mummy's there. So next, what we have to do is return the hen. And the ogres still walk around, as you may have seen, for a split second. Uh, if you walk around the ogre's house, even though you've stolen the hen, they still meander randomly around their house. So the hen belongs to Janesta. So we need to swim over there. Which is good, because we also have to give her the talisman, so... Kill two hens with one stone? Whatever. So, as always, swim towards the southern edge of the screen in case the shark appears. Make your way through. Whoops. Need to go around. Check out the beautiful scenery. Then... I can't remember if it's one of these. Nope. So by the looks of it, it's more stairs. Let's see. Oh, but it's easy stairs. So we're okay. Like, why aren't every stairs like this? Like, you click on the stairs and she just goes. So you look at the dying fairy and you give the talisman to Janesta. You give the talisman to Janesta, if you spell her name right. Her eyes open. They sparkle. She sits up in bed and stretches. She's happy. You've saved my life. And she takes you outside. And she's like, hey, my little hen. So here's where you get the extra points. So the hen is neither the hen nor the unicorn, or I even think Pandora's box are required to do. But without it, you won't get the full 230. And you explain that you're anxious to go home. Uh, and she said, oh, you know what? Let me put you back into your regular clothes. But there's something else. Boof. And she teleports Edgar there and changes him to what he should be as rather than the monster he looks on the outside she changes him to how he should look based on his inside which is a handsome young prince but you say no because you need to get back to your dad and give him the fruit pick up the hat have your dad eat the fruit and suddenly he sits up smiling and he's happy and he's like yeah what's in this fruit anyway and you're like it's magic father and you tell him about your adventure. And then you pretty much say, I don't think you're through with the hat. Uh, me and Alex think you should have it a little longer. So he puts on the hat. And if you know anything about King's Quest, and King's Quest V is indeed King Graham, who takes the next leg of the adventure in King's Quest V. So hang out. Uh, I'll probably get the King's Quest V video up there, hopefully with a little more uh, speed than I did King's Quest III to King's Quest IV. Uh, but there you have it. You've done it. If you're here right now, you made it through King's Quest IV with me. Hope you enjoyed it. 
I uh, hope you enjoyed the rattling. There is a non-commentary version that is three hours long. So if anything I did uh, sped by too quickly, you can actually watch the non-commentary version and see it actually all played out in uh, real time as I played. All right. Thank you for watching, and don't forget, let's play Sierra Games.